Now that we've seen what the force of gravity looks like, we can examine what type of motion it creates. Let's suppose we want to study a planet orbiting around a star. Because the force of gravity depends on the distance between the planet and the star, the planet feels a different force, acceleration, and change in velocity at each point in its orbit. We can think of this orbit as being sliced into individual frames for our animation. Each frame is separated by an amount of time delta t called the time step. In each frame, we calculate the force of gravity that the star exerts on the planet. Then, we calculate the acceleration that the planet feels in this frame by dividing by the planet's mass. Then, we calculate how much the planet's velocity changes in this frame by multiplying the planet's acceleration times the time step. We add this change to the velocity from the previous frame to find the planet's velocity for this frame. Using the velocity for this frame, we can then move the planet by a distance given by its new velocity times the time step. This new position for the planet changes the amount of force the planet feels from the star. By repeating this process one frame at a time, we can animate our planet in space. Here we create our star and planet much like we did before. We are also giving our planet a vector for the total force it experiences. VPython has a neat command called attach arrow that will create an arrow that stays up to date with the force on the planet. Here we set our time step. This number needs to be small in order to make our animation accurate. If you ever get strange results from this code, you should first try decreasing the time step. Next we have something called a loop. Loops are used in computer codes to repeat the same set of instructions over and over again. In this case, our code will repeat these indented lines. The first line of the loop is a rate command. This number controls the speed of the animation, but it does not affect any of the physics. If you find your animation is moving too quickly or too slowly, try changing the rate value. Next, we calculate the force acting on the blue planet. To do this, we use our g-force function from episode 17. Then, we use this force to calculate the planet's acceleration and then multiply by the time step to see how much the velocity changes. The plus equal sign here means that we add this change in velocity to the planet's velocity. Similarly, in the next line, we add to the planet's position the change in position caused by the new velocity. Running this code produces one of my favorite animations in all of physics. The planet always experiences a force pointed directly toward the star, but the planet itself never moves directly toward the star. In a sense, the planet is always falling toward the star, but its velocity always adjusts to swing around the star. I also love this animation because there are so many pieces that you can play around with. You can adjust the starting position of the planet, You can adjust the starting velocity of the planet. And if you make the planet fast enough, you can make it escape the star and never return. The activities at the link in the description below will help you grow your solar system by animating the star's motion and adding more planets and more stars. Here are some examples of what your results can look like. 